Welcome to Dive Bar Comedy Podcast. This is GT. I'm Wild Joe. Yeah. You know, uh, our dive bar shows have been great. I get nothing but compliments. People have been hitting me up trying to get back on the show. You know, I can't book them over and over and over and over. But, hey, if you got fans, that makes it even better. So, uh, yeah, come check out our show live. We've got a show coming up the end of this month, March 28th. And then uh, also, uh, GT, you just booked uh, April 25th, right? Thursday, April 25th at the Liquid Zoo. Every last Thursday of the month, we're going to be at the Liquid Zoo from now on. Did you get your uh, big banner posted up there? Not yet. I'm looking um, I'm looking to get it hanging up there soon. Is that what it says on it, the last Thursday of the month? Yep. I made that banner. Uh, that's ba- that banner's been up uh, since uh, uh, that place, Las Champas. Remember, I used to, uh, we used to have a show at Las Champas in City of Commerce. Yeah, that was, that was a, a really divey place. That was just like a... Like it was like a Taco Bell, but generic, like a generic Taco Bell in the ghetto. Yeah, and the guy went out of business. When the inspector came, and he, when they, <laughs> and the inspector came and said, "Hey, you don't have any entertainment license. You can't be having no entertainment going on here." And then he got discouraged, and decided to just drop the place altogether. Wow! Wow! I didn't know that, uh, but uh. Yeah, most uh, taco restaurants don't have an entertainment license, so it's kind of crazy that they're getting that strict on that. Well, ever, ever since I hung up the banner, uh, they came around. Before they wouldn't come around, when I hung up the banner, that's when they came. the inspectors came around. I see, I see. That makes sense. So, uh, yeah, if anybody's in L.A., come check out our show. Uh, we've got uh, March 28th. Where is that one? Liquid Zoo, where uh, every last Thursday of the month. We're I thought that was April fifth, April twenty fifth. March twenty eighth, we're at the Liquid Zoo, and April twenty fifth, we're at the Liquid Zoo again. Ah, last Thursday of the month. I get it. So uh, hey, you guys can mark your calendars every month. It's gonna be like a clockwork type thing, because GT's got his banner going back, and uh, it has to be on a regular schedule, or else that banner is not advertising the right thing. Also, opening up the show is gonna be the modules. And the modules, they're like 80s uh, rock. They do like mostly like Cure, Ramon, Sex Pistols. Uh, they have um, Boingo Boingo and uh, Violent Femmes type of music. Hey, mostly K-Rock 80s type of music. And uh, uh, Van Halen, the old Van Halen. Uh, they're all old now. Everything's old now. <laughs> so... Um, they're an eighties rock band. They're gonna be opening up the show. And then uh the comedy show co- starts at nine and then after ten thirty we're gonna have another uh singer songwriter called Javier B. And after that we have uh another band and he and then that's about it. Wow, so it's an all night affair. It's an all night affair and it's only ten dollars. So so check it out guys. Come on down. Um Speaking of all night affairs, GT, you've been uh, you've been coming home pretty late. You came home two a.m. last night. I didn't see you all day. You came home two a.m. You woke me up. You started talking to me, and you woke up our little creature, the, the one year old baby, and got her screaming and crying, which means guess what? I have to breastfeed again. Um, how do you mean to do that? I I was just trying to uh, see uh. If you were awake. Well, I was awake, um, but I didn't want to wake everybody up because uh, one person in our family is pretty annoying when she wakes up in the middle of the night. So uh, I would rather just let her keep sleeping. But, uh, yeah, she's been very clingy. I can't even get out of m- her bed and get into my own bed at all because she instantly feels when I'm not there and starts crying. So uh, I've been having some disrupted sleep. Waking up, I'm waking up a lot during the night. Yeah, when I go to sleep, and uh, I was like dreaming. Oh, what were you dreaming? I was dreaming. I was having, I was getting oral sex. 
This is a true dream. I, I feel like you're making this up right now. No, for real. I was like, I had, I was, uh, I was laying down in this bed, and uh, some girl was sucking my dick, and it wasn't you. I don't know if I believe you. I feel like you're making this dream up. I don't know. Is this a real dream, GT? Yeah, it was a real dream. Who was the girl? Some girl? I don't remember who it was, but I knew her from someplace. Well, it's good to know somebody that's giving you oral sex, but um, that's funny because I said, oh, do you ever rem- remember your dreams? He said, no, no, I never remember. My, never remember my dreams. Never remember them. And then all of a sudden... Now you remember some dream of some oral sex that you got. Yeah. I was getting a really good category F3 below job. All right. Well, I had a dream about you the other day. I had a dream that you that you admitted that you had cheated on me back in December. And uh, as soon as I found that out, I went on down to the hooker agency, and I signed myself up to be a hooker. There was a madam there. It was an office. I was putting my personal ad out. Um, I was saying uh, pregnant, blonde, MILF, horny, ready for fun. I was writing my ad so that uh, I could get my clients. And I was I was going to start doing uh, hookering as is, eight months pregnant and all. What were you going to call yourself? I don't know. Maybe I'll just stick with my name, Wild Joe. I, I hadn't p- thought of a name, but I was like saying blonde, Pregnant MILF, ready to go, ready for action. And I was going to attract all of the pervertiest perverts because uh, some people are into pregnant ladies. Oh, man. I had another dream. Uh, I was uh, in this place, like an old metal steel factory, and I was uh, fighting people. Sounds like a video game. Sounds like a video game. But, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, dreams are funny. I've been having a lot of dreams. I, I usually forget them within uh, minutes. Be- even if I remember it right afterward, I forget it within minutes. Uh, if you don't write them down, they're lost forever. But uh, that one I remember because it was kind of funny and unusual. It ended with me um, walking this other hooker out to her car. She was wearing a crop top and kind of had an average, well, not average, but okay body kind of like a a bit flabby but mostly in shape but she just looked like a trashy hooker and I was going to give her a ride to her next job like I was getting all signed up and um anyway the reason I remember that dream not only it was funny but I also told the people at work about it the next day they thought it was kind of funny too oh man my wife is a hooker yeah, I, I actually shocked I, I shocked the people at work. I said, you know, if I ever caught my husband cheating on me, he would come home to me having a gangbang with all his best friends. That's what I said. Uh, I guess that's my style of revenge. My other uh, coworker said she would just, like, kill him. But uh, I guess uh, I, I have a fun way of getting revenge, having a gangbang with all the people he knows. <laughs> oh, my God. So if I walk in, you know, having a gangbang with all my buddies, can I join in? <laughs> uh, no, no, uh, because I'm really mad at you. I'd be only doing that to be be really a bitch because I'm really mad at you. That's my form of revenge. And then I, in my dream, in my subconscious, I thought of another form of revenge, just sign up with a hooker agency, even while I'm pregnant. Well, I think... I might sign up for a hooker agency myself. Maybe I could be a gigolo. I know some old ladies. One of my old lady boss, who's like uh, 80 or 90 years old, she uh, was telling me when we met up one day that she was looking for a younger guy. She wasn't attracted to guys her age. And um, she just wanted somebody that you could just pay, like to go out on a date and have some nice sex. That she was done being married. She'd been married four times. And she just uh, wanted to get laid with a young, attractive guy. And um, I actually had a male roommate at the time, a young, attractive roommate, and he said he would do it. But then I felt kind of weird about, like, writing her afterwards, like, emailing her and being like, hey, I found a guy for you. I probably should have done it because I I think she would have appreciated it. Has he seen her? She's a good-looking lady, but he's, like, 80. That is a little old. He goes, 
you know, I, I can't, what do you say? He said, I know he hadn't seen her, but she's not a bad looking lady. And, and he said, I can't promise what do you say? I can't promise sex, but I can promise satisfaction. That's what he said. Satisfaction. Hmm. You mean he's going to eat her pussy? Yeah, to me that seems like even a more difficult task for, for a male. But maybe he meant that he might not be able to get it up, so that's all he'd be able to do. But anyway, he was willing to do it. I, I really should have set them up. That would have been uh, probably happy for both of them. You know what? I've seen that old lady. She's kind of cute. Yeah, she's a cute old lady. She's a cute old lady. And, um, uh, yeah, she's a nice, cute Jewish f old lady. She's she's not fat. She's uh, petite. And um, I'm sure uh, he would have been able to uh, deal with, you know, I don't know, a few wrinkles here and there. But, uh, yeah, it, it didn't happen because I kind of chickened out about setting it up. You know, I felt weird setting the two of them up for some kind of uh, paid sex situation. I think she was once looking at my dick. I caught her looking at my dick. She was looked at me, smiled, and then looked at my dick. Okay, I kind of doubt that, but anyway, anyway, I don't know. All right, well, uh, this is going to be a fun show that we have today uh, for you listeners. We have a few very funny, awesome comics with both interviews and live stand-up sets from a recent show we did um, at Universal Bar and Grill, one of our favorite places to perform. So check it out, and uh, please subscribe. Uh, and you can find us all over the web. Check us out um, at divebarcomedy.com, uh, the Dive Bar Comedy Facebook, and... Um, you can go to our individual Twitter and Facebook pages, Wild Joe Comedy, that's J-O, or wildjo.com. Or check out GT's page, uh, gtscomedyjam.com. We're all over the place. So uh, please check us out. Come to our shows live and uh, drop us a note and let us know how you, how you feel, what you think about us. Attention all drinkers. Attention all drinkers. Do you like a smooth tasting vodka that goes down with no burn? How about Global Vodka, straight from Italy? Check it out. You can find it at global-vodka.com. Not only does it have a smooth, great taste, it also is gluten-free and organic for you health nuts. So try Global Vodka. You can find it at global-vodka.com. Or next time you're in L.A., check it out at Universal Bar & Grill. Hey there, Dive Bar Comedy listeners. We are here with our... Favorite MC, Mr. C. Yeah, what it do, what it do, dive bar. And his friend, who is part of the skit bags, named Kevin DeWitt. Uh, Kevin DeWitt, how are you? Quite a plethora, as part as what I'm a part of. <laughs> so, uh, what are the skit bags? What are you doing with the skit bags here? Um, uh, that's shit, I've done several things. Oh, who are you? Uh, I'm Kevin DeWitt. Yeah, I know you're Kevin DeWitt, but, but, but what have you been doing that's uh, skip bags related? Uh, yeah, everything. Kevin's shy. He's like, what? What? Yeah, I'm just, I'm going to explain to you that. Um, what films are you in? What work are you doing? What is this t shirt? All right, yes, I just uh, booked a, a job on this um, uh, as a. Uh, <clears throat> oh, Kevin, we're going to have to. So Kevin's bandit. been smoking a lot of weed, and I gave it to him, so I apologize. Kevin DeWitt is Kevin, was, Kevin was talking a mile a minute until I put the microphone in front of his face, and all of a sudden he stops talking. Yeah, but it's in front of here. I can do this. Hi, my name's Kevin DeWitt. Uh, I did a fucking shit ton of skit bags thing. Um, the main thing that's coming out is going pro. Or, I'm sorry, pros and cons. Pros and cons. Yeah. I got a... Ah. And who's in the pros and cons? The pros and cons is myself, Richard Real, uh, Michael Hermosa, directed, written. Uh, what are you doing on there, though? What are you doing? Are you you're editing? You're acting? What are you doing? Uh, I'm actually first Bill. What does that mean? You're acting. I'm the first motherfucker in the credits. Oh, so you're the star. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I have uh, I have other plethoras of works and whatnots. 
Um, I'm in a movie with Tiffany Haddish, All Between Us. Oh, cool. On Amazon. You can also see me on Hulu's. Uh, what the fuck was the name of that movie? With uh, ca- uh, Fishbowl, California. Yeah, I forgot about that one. And, uh, <laughs> um, and they're also about a reprise. I have a reoccurring role in the Tupac Biggie saga. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, every I'm, I play a fucking gang detective, and I'm 2003 across the board. They even gave me a gosh dang StarTac phone. You got too much hair to be a detective. Uh, you, they, they make you put your hair away? No, I'm a 2003 gang detective. I'm undercover. I'm undercover. Uh, okay, so you're like. Totally on whatnots. What you trying to say about my hair? Hair's a street. No, I'm just saying. Uh, he's got very curly, uh, long hair, and. Um, I just don't see it as a cop kind of look. I don't see it as a cop kind of look. So undercover, undercover, 2003, undercover in the streets. I'm in the streets. <laughs> so uh, you try to sell drugs to these drug dealers and stuff like that? No, I'm just looking for Poochie, but he got blasted. Looking for Poochie. I'm always looking for Poochie. It's so <laughs> not Coop. Bless you. Not Coochie. Poochie, and I'm sorry I don't have fucking holy Tourette's, but I hear people sneeze from miles away. <laughs> oh, yeah. What is Poochie? Uh, Poochie's the guy that allegedly killed fucking ah. Biggie. No, I thought it was uh, that other guy, uh, Tupac. No, Tupac is Orlando Jones. Oh, oh, okay, I thought Tupac killed Biggie and Biggie killed Tupac. No, Orlando Jones killed Tupac <laughs> after uh, Suge Knight let him get into a stupid fight. And told his homeboys to hook it up. So Suge Knight kind of accidentally got Tupac killed in his ignorance because he wasn't a real big gangster and he was a suburb fuck. And he got Pac killed because of that. And then in revenge, uh, they wanted Biggie killed. So some Crips from another place in this Poochie character apparently killed Biggie in some alignment because they had beef with the Bloods, which was Suge Knight's people. And it was a Bloods versus Crips thing and a lot of cops involved and a lot of ignorance by a lot of fake motherfucking gangster rappers like Suge Knight. Wow, uh, Mr. C knows all about this. And it was like an, a, a very, like, it was a power move also for all the rights and and, and whatnots for, uh, um, the other thing that you're going to love is I'm in the, I got the hookup. Surprising that, a movie that came out 20 years ago. It's all about nostalgia now. Like, we're the motherfuckers that, uh, that are grown and spend the money. Huh? Tell the people they're white. They don't know what I got the hook up in. Oh, motherfucker. Honkies. <laughs> I got the hook. Okay, by the way, Kevin DeWitt is white. Oh, yes. Yeah, but I'm, I'm a little more than that. I'm blacker than most. So I'm black where it, I'm black I'm where it counts. I'm the token white guy. I'm the token white guy in the Haddish movie. I'm the token white guy, and I got the hook up. I play a toe-sucking bandit. Uh, I have scenes with Mike Epps, and, and Snoop is there, and... Like basically, I'd crawl into windows trying to steal cash, and but I look over and there's always these fine Dominican women with their fucking feet sticking out of the bed, and I just can't fucking help myself. You're into feet. Characters into feet. I'm a toe-sucking bandit. Is that shown in the in the movie? Yeah, that's that's my character. Yeah, yeah. And so now they're gonna reprise me. They're gonna doing a third one, and I'm all throughout the third one. Wow, well, you're getting you're getting a lot of movies, you're getting a lot of parts. Uh, this is Master P. Um. So. Uh, oh wait, but I, I have something else I want to talk about. Your voice is so gravelly and and rugged. Where are you? Where are you from? Oh, uh, well, I grew up in the Carolinas, uh, Southern Pines, North Khaki, and Charleston, South Carolina. My college years. We're in Wilmington, North CAC, and um, yes, my voice is a little distinct because uh, I happen to do the ADR for Danny McBride. Thank God, because I heard that shit forever. You know you sound like, you know you sound like. I'm like What's ADR? ADR is, uh, that motherfucker's so busy that they pull up. There's times when they pull up in front of my house with a movable sound booth, and I do all the... ADR is uh, just when you see a voice when you see him turn and you hear voice voices trees it's my voice 
So wait, so this guy, sometimes it's his voice, sometimes it's your voice? That's that's correct, yeah. But you sound that much alike. It's uncanny. Who is this guy again? Danny McBride. All right. He's down. I don't know if you've ever seen that. That's one of his. I haven't seen it, but I've heard of it. And, and you're like his voice twin. Yep. April! I mean, basically. <laughs> Not trying to be the best I could be at exercising. I play real sports. Wow. <laughs> Fuck all that fucking triathlon shit. <laughs> well, uh, not to be racist, but uh, you look like a racist. I'm surprised you're always the token white guy. Surprisingly enough, I am not. I didn't say you were a racist. I didn't say you were a racist. I just said you uh, that. A tiki torch? <laughs> no, I just say like I could I could see you getting typecast. I could see you getting typecast as a racist instead of the token white guy. You don't strike me as that look. Well, if it helps, <laughs> Donald Trump does not look racist at all. He looks like a mob boss that was also hated on for his beautiful orange olive colored skin. So that shows you what people who look like racists are and people who don't look like racists are. But he's too blonde. War with Korea. Nobody fucking wants to talk about that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to talk about Trump. I don't talk about politics, religion, and who the best lyricist is, Tupac or Biggie, because it's fucking Nas. <laughs> <laughs> Words to live by. Words to live by. All right, Kevin. So uh, so you already said you're on, you're on all these shows. You're on Amazon. Is there any place you want people to find you online or look you up on the Internet? Um. Oh, fuck. Hey, what's funny is I got two IMDb pages, which fucking blows my fucking balls off, but I refuse to pay to get my photo on there. I have two IMDb pages, uh, one with a lowercase W and one with a capital W, uh, Kevin DeWitt. And you can find me at Kevin motherfucking DeWitt on Instagram. And uh, he mentioned before the interview he has a pet peeve. You must capitalize the W in DeWitt. That is absolutely capitalized fucking right. All right. Well, pleasure having you on. Uh, Sorry, you I curse a lot. Uh, Mrs. C curses a lot, too. Yes, fuck shit, fuck shit, pussy, dick, cunt, lick, anus. Uh, anus is... Faggot. Uh, anus, is anus is a medical term. That's not a bad word. It, it felt cursy. It felt cursy. Because he, right he said it right after lick, which is also not a bad word. I know, but I want to lick anus. That sounds bad. Well, All right. It depends on what day of the week it is and what she looks like. And uh, <laughs> when's the last time she took a shower, too? Exactly. You know? It's not about bleaching the asshole. It's just about fucking washing it. There it is. Good idea. All right. We're going to go wash our ass now. Um, thank you for your interview, Kevin. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Hey guys, you need flooring because your floors got messed up during the last party. You need flooring because your dog urinated all over the place and it's all brown and stained and it's buckling and it's warping because of your dog. You were out doing comedy. No one was home. Well, log on to selectflooring.biz. Selectflooring.biz. B-I-Z. And hit them up. Call them up. Say, hey, what your situation is. Yeah, we're at Universal Bar and Grill with Wild Joe and GT. We have a guest here called Savannah K. Hey, Savannah, what's up? Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited. How are you? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to deep throat the microphone. You can touch it. You, you can touch it. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Woo. Off to a great start, Wild Joe. I'm excited to be here at the Universal Bar and Grill. We have a lovely view of the um, Toyota car lot across the street, and um, it's, all ex it's all happening. You know what? Uh, that Toyota car lot across the street is uh, GT's old workplace. Yeah, that, I remember getting into fights with other salesmen on that lot because they were trying to steal my customers. People would just come and try to take your customers away. Yeah, you had some crazy stories about that Toyota lot. So, uh, yeah, memories. I, I was actually, uh, I, I've been working in this office for about six months doing accounting. And uh, we took a, a trip down Sunset Boulevard, like four of us, to go to this event. And 
I'm passing all these places like, oh, that's where I almost had a threesome with two guys. Oh, that's a strip club where I did the amateur contest. And, like all these memories are popping up and like I'm like, oh, I better keep my mouth shut. This is not the place to, to talk about this in a car full of my coworkers. Right. Memories and, and trauma at every turn in L.A. That's, that's how we roll Wild Joe, isn't it? Right. I guess I've been uh, in L.A. too long. Sunset Boulevard has lots and lots of memories on every corner for me. Girl. Yeah, well, I'm originally from Texas, so um, I declared asylum out here. And so I'm, 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 most of my adult life has been in, in L.A., but originally from Texas. I moved here when I was 19, and so, uh, yeah. Where are you from? Where? I moved from Modesto, California, which is uh, a little more boring, but, but I still, we managed to have fun there. I remember being 15 and sneaking into the 16 and over club and being 17, sneaking into the 18 and over club, being 19, sneaking into the 21 and over club. And then, uh, yeah, I finally turned 21 when I was here, and I was, like, r- busting loose, like, uh, my whole 20s. Uh, I'll say my 30s also. I love you. You're fabulous. <laughs> We're going to be besties, I can tell. But if you guys saw her, she 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 looks like little Mary Sunshine. She's very sweet. I mean, I mean, in the sweetest way. Like, she, she looks really sweet and innocent, but it's like I'm finding so much out. This is very exciting. Yeah, it's, it's good to be able to hide uh, your true identity. So Savannah, I feel like I'm either remembering you wrong or you have a new hair color. You look uh, like a redhead, a ravishing redhead now. It's kind of a ravishing purple head. I didn't. It, I call it um, bored on Valentine's Day. I um, I just yeah, I needed a change. I was like, I'm tired of dating myself. Even I need some new pussy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I was just like I needed to to mix it up a little bit. So I um, yeah. So it's kind of a reddish purple because it was blonde. And it ended up kind of going a little bit more purple, but yeah. Well, we are under some red neon lights out here, so I can't see the exact color, but it, it looks very actually naturalistic in this lighting. And uh, yeah, I do remember you being more of a, a blonde. So um, now that you have turned into a redhead, would you say uh, you're getting different reactions from people? It is different. You know, it is different. I think you do have a different experience as a blonde versus a redhead. Also fun. But um, it, I don't, I don't know if they're, it's pretty fun to be a blonde. I, I think I'll go back at some point. But, but yeah, I'm trying this out. Yeah, when I um, let my full hair color grow out, it was kind of this, what they call dishwater blonde, boring, drab color. In certain lighting, people thought I was a redhead or a brunette. I wasn't getting my normal reaction and I just couldn't take it for too long. I had to start highlighting again and go back to being blonde. Yeah, you get you get you get some attention, but um I don't know. I'm good. I'm churning it out. I like it. it. Looks very healthy. Very healthy. GT, uh do you have any hair tips for people? By the way, GT has no hair. Um Kim Jong Hoon has a cool haircut. Uh most society accepts. Well, if you live in North Korea, you kind of have to accept your supreme leader. But uh, is he wearing platform shoes? Do you wonder? I don't know because he's as tall as Donald Trump or whatever. When they're walking. Oh, I didn't, I didn't catch that, but that's a good point. I wonder, I wonder if he's wearing like big old platform boots, like from the '70s or something. Prince would wear high heels, and and one time I actually got pulled up on stage after a lot of finagling with the security guards. We got pulled up on stage with Prince, my sister and I, and uh, and we were. S- he came up to our area and we were dancing next to him and he was shorter than I am. I'm about five, five. And that was with heels. So he's a very small or was a very tiny petite guy. If I had to fuck a dead guy, Prince, is that bad to say? Well, I wouldn't do it now, but if I could have done it a few years ago, it would have been a much, much better fuck. <laughs> I, I concur. I concur. But I mean, sexy, right? I mean, even... Even though he's like four feet tall, I mean, still just hot, right? Sexy motherfucker, right? Turned us out, but I think I'm older than I'm. I'm a bit older than you, but yeah, I grew up on Prince for sure. So did I. I had a goal. I was gonna lose my virginity to to Prince. Uh, I wish I could remember. Oh, that one with the the little video bo- box. No, no, no. The something about a little box with a mirror and a tongue inside. You know that song? <laughs> I think Darling Nikki was the song that turned me out. Oh, that one is hot, too, but a little box and a tongue inside. Get off 23 positions in a one-night stand. Yeah, that was going to be my, but it didn't end up happening. I already had picked out the guy and everything, and it just didn't end up happening. 
I know. Sometimes the best laid plans, right? But the best plans to get laid. Sometimes, yes. But I know the song, um, Darling Nikki. Um, should I sing it? Knew a girl named Nikki. I guess you could say she was a sex fiend. Uh, met her in a hotel lobby, masturbating with a magazine. But you know, while Joe, I always wondered, like, didn't she get paper cuts? Oh, no, I think she was just looking at the magazine. This is before the internet. Oh. I don't know. But uh, Silly. But that's a good point. That's a good point. What's your favorite Prince song, GT? Do you have a favorite Prince song? Guess. Kiss? I said guess. I, I, that was my guess. All right. Little Red Corvette. Oh, he, GT loves Corvettes. I remember I, ha I used to have a Corvette before I met you, and uh, it was loud, crazy, wild. It was, it was exactly from the same era as, as Prince, from the 80s. My, my Barbie dream car was a Corvette, I believe, also. So, yeah, you're right. That was like the hot car. I mean, it's still a hot car, but that was definitely the hot car, one of the hot cars of the 80s. And um, I remember one time uh, GT and I, I was, we, we were in a bathtub together. We're married, by the way. I think Savannah knows this, but we were in a bathtub together. We were, uh, we were. I, I almost would have, I almost would have been turned on enough to make it ro a romantic you have thing. A little bit of a girl crush on your wife, GT. I Thank you. I, I, I still got it. Full disclosure. <laughs> she still got it. Um, but yeah, we were in a bathtub together. I was like thinking it could be romantic, but he ended up talking the whole time about his monster truck that he used to have. And his old Corvette, and it was a kind of a, a, even though we were in the bathtub, it was not sexy. Yeah, hello, me here, make, and I'm all about the monster. But we all know what monster truck is code for, so. Yeah, yeah. Tell you something. Oh, I said, uh, I said one time we were. Monster truck. She said you were talking about your monster truck the whole time. Yeah, one time we were going to have a romantic interlude, but you talked about your truck the whole time, and it ruined it. Yeah, I miss my Ford F-150 monster truck. I miss it. I used to hardly ever drive it, though. Oh, tell us about the wheels. It was huge. It was huge. It wasn't that big, but I, it, it kept people kept punking, hey, you're out of your lane. Uh, GT's probably always uh, going out of his lane. But um, anyway, Savannah, do we have any surprises uh, in store tonight? You know, I'm going to try um, probably some of my craziest material, I say, for you guys, for for the GT show, um, just because it's fun. It's tr it's fun to try new stuff here at the at the Bar and Grill, and um, I like it because um, I do feel a little bit, you know, the doing the dive bar comedy, you do feel a little bit more free. It's not as restricted as some other stuff. So, yeah, I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to talk about dating and technology and, um, yeah, just kind of like the emotional disconnect with that. All right. All right. Well. It sounds kind of deep, but it's, it's really not. But <laughs> yeah, you can hopefully funny. Hopefully funny. Yeah, you can take de deep things and, and make them lighthearted. Hopefully. Yeah. All right, Savannah. Well, I look forward to hearing your set, and I'm happy to have you back on our show again. Woo! Savannah K. K's for Call Me. You can follow me on Instagram. Um, it's K-A-Y, Savannah K. All right, thank you. Awesome. Hey, ladies, you want some hot deals on sexy styles? Check out everydaysweetheart.com for everyday great deals on cute and sexy outfits, club wear, mini dresses, leggings, sexy lingerie, and guys, feel free to stop by too and find something hot for the girl of your dreams. That's everydaysweetheart.com. And for 10% off, use the friend code TAKE10. That's T-A-K-E-1-0. Thanks a lot. Once again, go to Bob and the GT Comedy Jam. Thanks, everybody, for coming around and hanging out. We got a wonderful comedian coming up to the stage, a wonderful young lady. She got a cool name, like she a, a Southern Belle or some shit. I don't know. She probably could cook good chicken. So I, as a black man, I might have to marry her on the shrimp. She got a big butt. It's over here. That's all I know. But show some love, put it together. She got the S for the first letter, the K for the last letter, and show some love for Miss Savannah. K!
I'm just gonna learn how to twerk. I'll keep you posted. How y'all doing? Hello. Woo! Yes, thank you. I'm Savannah K. K is for call me. So uh, thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, I want to acknowledge um, perhaps the visual experience that you might be having with me. I, re I recognize that with this nose and um, this hair and these boobs, I do look a little bit like um, Lady Gaga and Dolly Parton came together and maybe created a miraculous, like a middle-aged love child. I, uh, I realize that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know the boobs are a little distracting. Yeah, they're distracting for me too sometimes. I'm late for work sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But um, anyway, I, I actually I have an announcement I want to make, and I want to share it with you, good people Woo! here tonight. I um, I actually received a proposal of marriage today. Woo! Thank you, thank you. Um, on Facebook, a um, yeah, I know, yeah. Some romantic. A um, a gentleman from India, yeah, has asked me, Savannah Kay. <laughs> to be his wedded bride. You know, I, I, uh, I responded like any modern American woman would. With, oh my God, thank you. And can you please send me a million dollars? And a dick pic. <laughs> I have received at least one of those items. <laughs> Still waiting on the money though. But I think it's gonna come through, Dupree, because you know what I did? I, um, I went ahead, I sent off my social security number, my account information, all that. So I think I'm good. I think that train's gonna come on in, yeah. It's gonna be a, a destination wedding. He's, um, he's actually making a house out of cow dung. And, um, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a beautiful ceremony. He's put up a dowry of six skulls and a bag of rice. So romantic. But I do hope it comes through because the struggle is real. It's not easy, is it? The struggle is real in 2019, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. On a positive note and for the record, so are these. <laughs> Just, you know, so you know, for the record. I know my family's mortified. My family's mortified that I'm up here telling boob jokes in front of our bed to say ridiculous. But um, I have, are you guys dating? What's, are you together? Mary, congratulations. How many years? Going on three. Going on three? <laughs> like going on three. <laughs> yeah, good. What's the secret? How's it going? <laughs> good advice, words of wisdom, words to live by. We deal with each other's shit. Well, I gotta tell you, I've, I've been looking for love in all the wrong places. And by that, I mean Los Angeles, <gasps> you know? Um, Boy, I tell you, but I'm so jaded. I mean, I see a profile and it says, um, hopeless romantic, will do anything for love. And I'm like, that's code, right? That is so code for a, yeah, I'm about to win. Mix it, you credit cards. Fuck your sister and uh, shoot your dog. You know? In retrospect, I should have broken up with that guy after he maxed out my credit cards. <laughs> Boy, okay. But you know what, well, Joe, I gotta tell you, that was some powerful dick, okay? <laughs> so, you know, you get caught up. You get caught up. So, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, you know, the other thing is, I just feel, I feel like they, you know, the, the, another guy, I gotta learn to read between the lines with the profiles. You know, like another guy, his profile said, my name's Gunther, and I'm a down to earth kind of guy. No kidding, you guys, he showed up two feet tall. <laughs> down to earth, right? He came, he came about here on me. <laughs> he was a pleaser though, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that was hard to walk away from, we dated from the, you know, Literally, like it was, uh, you know. But um, gosh, I don't know. It's crazy. It is crazy. Anybody doing online dating? Yeah. Woo, yeah. Anybody with crowds? Woo, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, is that one minute, GT? Okay. Oh, whoa. We're working on. Okay. So the other thing I want to say is a lot of people are watching porn. Things have just gotten crazy, right? And I, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> 
you know, the old nod. Yeah. I think you're right. You get kind of ideas in your head when you're watching porn. Am I right? Oh yeah. Sure. You know what I mean? And then so then you sort of bring. And I mean, I, we're all adults here, so I'm just gonna say I'm, a, I mean, I'm an old-fashioned girl. It's a little too diamond-like for me. Everybody's fucking and swiping and swiping and fucking. It's a lot to take in, literally. You know. But um, but I have to say, you know, one thing. You know what's more awkward than a guy coming in your face is that moment before when he's like, so uh, do you mind if I come in your face? <laughs> That's an awkward fuck. Like in no universe is that, you know what I mean? And then, and I'm like, okay, I don't, but I don't know how sexy I'm gonna look going, you know? And then, but I, but I wanna make the relationship work, right? I wanna make it work, so I'm like, okay, I'll take off the team. And I'm like, you know what, babe? You just, um, you wait right here. I'm, I'm gonna go slip into something a little bit more comfortable. And I come back, not even interested. He's watching TV now. And I guess he's like a little turned off because I'm wearing, you know, the raincoat and the hockey mask. <laughs> so, um, anyway. I gotta tell you, the older I get, I'll leave you with this. The older I get, the more I just, I've decided I'm bisexual. And by that, I mean like, I feel really sexual when somebody buys me something. <laughs> so um, I'm drinking gin and tonic tonight, if anybody's asking. My name's Savannah Kay. Thank you so much, y'all have been great. Nice. Another round of applause for Savannah Kane. You heard the boys, Jim and Tommy, Jim and Pussy Tommy. Hey, guys, you need a party tent. You need a commercial tent. You need a tent because you have no garage. Well, log on to webtentsale.com. W-E-B-T-E-N-T-S-A-L-E.com. And check out our site. This site is designed for commercial tents, party tents, and anything but camping tents. So if you need a tent because you have a party and you need to buy it instead of renting it all the time, you're tired of throwing your money down the drain, well, go to our website, webtentsale.com, and check it out and order your tent right now. Hey there, Dive Bar Comedy listeners. I am Wild Joe. I am here with comic David Sharp. And thank you for having me. All righty, David. You are new to the GT's Comedy Jam. Uh, have you ever performed at a dive bar before? I perform almost exclusively at dive bars and the worst comedy clubs in Los Angeles. You don't look like that kind of guy. You, you look like a classy guy. Oh, uh, well, I've got you fooled then. <laughs> so, uh, what can we expect from you tonight, uh, since we've never seen you before? What, what are your favorite uh, subjects that you like to talk about on stage? Uh, tonight I will probably be talking about Trump and my new baby. You have a new baby? How old? Three months. Aww. I'm about to have a baby. I'm going to have a baby very, very, very soon. Too soon. I was thinking about asking that but also I've learned uh, from experience to let let the lady bring that up uh, just in case yeah we're like this is just a huge stomach tumor why are you asking me about this bump that I have how far along are you seven or I guess seven months pretty far I only have one and a half months left oh man you must be pretty excited no I'm not because uh no I, I wish I could hold it in for like a couple, few more years because uh, I already have a baby. This is going to be very hard. Oh, I see. So you know what to expect then. You're not like scared or nervous. It's more just the same old, same old. No, I'm more scared and nervous because I know what to expect. And I'm, I'm just hoping that this baby doesn't like to cry. I've heard that the second one is easier. I think it's luck of the, what is it called? Luck of the draw, luck of the draw. Luck of the draw, right, right. If everyone out there can pray for me to have a baby that hates crying and loves sleeping and just laying around, that's uh, what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all of them. That's babies, right? Peaceful, uh, quiet, 
they sleep on their own, you know, eight hours a night consecutively. How do you, how old's your other one? 15 months. Oh man, that seems, how are you going to get any sleep? Because you're going to have the one that's going crazy in the middle of the night and then you have the other one that's awake during the day all the time. I'm, I'm stopping at one. This is it. Uh, yeah, I, I, maybe I should have done that, but too late now. But yeah, my first one is still acting just like a newborn, waking up three times a night, uh, won't sleep on her own, uh, wants to be there with her all the time. She won't stop breastfeeding like 10 times a day. And uh, she's, she's basically still a baby, which is a baby that's just learning how to walk. And um, she's going to be in for the shock of her life. You're going to run out of milk. How will you have enough? Honestly, I don't think my current baby cares if anything's coming out. She just wants to suck my tits. It's a it's a comfort thing, right? It's just nice. I guess so. So I guess I'll have to feed the little baby first and then just give her the empty bag. Oh man, uh, that sounds tough. I and if there's two, they can team up against you. Also, once they get older. Yeah, when they're older. I'm not worried. I'm just trying to get through the first few months and and hope that the older one doesn't kill the younger one. We were thinking we'll probably just have one, uh, and then as soon as we had one, we were like, yeah, we'll definitely just have one. Uh, we're stopping here. That's it. Yeah, there's no perfect number because zero might have been the perfect number, but then after you have one, it's too late, and then you think, oh, but they're going to grow up alone, and what about after we die? They, they, we need to make some permanent friends, a brother or sister for them, and, you know, anyway, I might end up with five. Who knows what's going to happen? Oh, God, that's too many. It's too many babies. Yeah. So anyway, so I'm going to be talking about my baby on stage also as well. Um, anyway, it seems like the, this band here is, is wrapping up, so we don't have a lot of time. But uh, can you let people know uh, where they can find you online? Uh, Twitter and Instagram, uh, the Sharp David. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, I look forward to hearing your, your set, and uh, thanks for coming on Dive Bar Comedy. Thank you so much, and good luck with your baby. Oh, man. Oh, good luck with your baby, too. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. L.A. residents, are you tired of slippery floors? Are you afraid you might slip on your tile? Well, check out tightgripla.com. It's a local business coming out, surveying your floors, and treating it with a non-slip solution, a semi-permanent non-slip solution that will keep your floors safe, whether in the rain outdoors or indoors in the kitchen or bathroom areas that sometimes get wet and very slippery. So if you want safer floors and to not get injured while you're just walking around, check out tightgripla.com. All right, so you guys ready for the next comedian coming to the stage? Are you ready for the next comedian coming to the stage? I like this dude name too. He sound like he got like a Puerto Rican lifestyle because his last name cuts like a motherfucking knife. He got a D for the first letter and an S for the last name. And put your hands together and show some love for Mr. David Sharp. Thank you, thank you. As you can tell, I am not Puerto Rican. I uh, had to break up with my uncle. He was a uh, it was a Trump uncle. Oh. Anybody else got a Trump uncle? Yeah. Yeah. Cut that shit off. Probably gonna be too much. Uh, he was one of the ones that posts like the memes. Uh, the last straw was he posted on Facebook. Uh, Racism hasn't been a thing in America since Dr. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. I commented on that. Uh, I don't think you know how that story ends. <laughs> Also, uh, two Thanksgivings ago, you told a joke that for sure had the N-word in it, so better double check the math on that no more racism in America thing, Uncle Tommy. Uh, the one thing I don't understand about Trump voters, let me rephrase that. One of the many things that I don't understand about Trump voters, thank you, uh, is don't you get sick of lying for somebody else? Like, aren't you sick of being a chump for Trump? Posting all these things that aren't true. You're like the kid on the schoolyard that goes up spreading malicious gossip just for the attention. Where you're like, I heard that Susie M's family eats worms for dinner. No. What? Tommy C told me that Tommy F told him that Tammy L's dad was the Golden State Killer. No, it wasn't. Well, Sarah S. told me that Kelly Ann C. told her that Mexico was going to pay for the wall. 
Packers. No, they're not. Uh, but I did hear a rumor uh, that uh, little Donnie is going to be going to the principal's office very soon. Uh, he's going to be in detention for a long time. A rumor I heard. When I told my uncle I didn't want to have anything to do with it anymore, uh, he said, politics should never divide a family. And I said, well, that's funny, because uh, a few years ago, you kicked out one son because you caught him smoking weed. And you kicked out another son because you found out that he was gay. So it kind of seems like you've already divided your family with your politics. Uh, I wonder, why is it that the people that are like, oh, don't divide the country, we have to unite, uh, are the same assholes that are tearing the country apart. Uh, if you want to unite the country, quit being a fucking asshole. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right, let's talk about more fun stuff. Got to get that chip off my shoulder. Uh, in more pleasant news, uh, this last November, uh, I was happy to welcome into this world uh, my firstborn child, my son, Porter Hideo, etc. Sharp. Thank you. Seven pounds, uh, two ounces, 22 inches. I know people really care about those numbers for some reason. Uh, it was a very exciting day, but I also felt like I was not adequately prepared by television and movies for what was going to happen. Uh, for example, anytime you see a birth on TV, uh, the baby comes out looking cute. And my baby didn't even come out looking like a baby. <laughs> Like, he came out looking like an alien from the movie Aliens. Uh, he was gray, uh, he had this long distended head, and he was drenched in blood. <laughs> the whole time I was like asking the nurses, I'm like, is this normal, is this normal? Is everything normal? They're like, yes, everything is normal, aside from the tiny little mouth inside of his mouth. Uh, we had that removed, and it was fine. Uh, I had the beautiful moment of, uh, I got to cut the umbilical cord, it's an exciting moment in any father's life. Uh, I was told that it was going to be magical, it was going to be inspirational, but as soon as I cut into it, I got hit in the face with a jet of human blood. <laughs> Just umbilical colored cord blood right in the face. Uh, that's why I'm glad he's not an alien from Aliens, because if he was, he would have just melted my face right off. Uh, but instead, uh, I got blood in my eyes, in my nose, and in my mouth. Uh, in case you are wondering, and I know that you're not what umbilical cord blood tastes like, I'll tell you, uh, it tastes exactly like human blood, because that's what it fucking is. Uh, it's gross. Uh, greatest day of my life. Very gross. Uh, everybody's fine, happy now. Uh, so uh, I work from home, uh, which makes taking care of the baby much easier. Uh, I'm a stay-at-home writer. Uh, oh, a writer. Have I read anything you've written? Yes. Uh, you know when you Google something and you get like three pages of garbage before you find the thing you're actually looking for? That was me. I wrote that garbage. You're welcome. Uh, I have written for every different kind of company under the sun. Uh, the best ones that I've written for, I can't tell you about because they make me sign non-disclosure agreements. So just trust me that I wrote for cool people. Um, Less cool things that I've written for, uh, I wrote for a company that makes exclusively golf cart seat covers. Not golf carts, not golf cart seats, just the covers for the seats. Uh, I wrote for a company uh, that makes supplements, so I've written about uh, dick pills, brain pills, uh, joint pills, skin cream, and for some reason, anytime I tell people that, they only want to know about one of those things. <laughs> the fellas are only asking me about one of those things, and it's not brain pills. Uh, I wrote uh, for a company that the only product they sell uh, are shutters and blinds. That's it. That's all they sell. Uh, and for some reason, uh, they wanted me to write 25 lifestyle blogs about the fast-paced world of shutters and blinds. Uh, I'm a good writer because I like to research. I go deep into a topic. And uh, the thing is that if you do enough research, you start to believe in your own bullshit. Uh, I got so deep in the world of shutters and blinds, I started thinking of them as the solution to all of life's problems. Uh, now, some of you right now are probably doubting me. What's so great about shutters and blinds? What you thinking? Let me tell you. Uh, shutters and blinds control the light that comes into your house, right? It's simple. But if you can control the light, you can also control the temperature, which means that you control how hot or cold your house is, meaning you don't have to run your heater or your air conditioner, so all of a sudden, shutters and blinds are saving you money on your 
utility bill. So thank you, Shutter's Appliance. Not only that, however, it's better for the environment, which means that Shutter's Appliance are actually helping save the world. And what's the one thing that's more important than the world? You. Your life. When you turn on your air conditioner, that is shooting mold spores in your house. You can get Legionnaire's disease, black lung, probably, I don't know. Uh, but the thing is that Shutter's Appliance can literally save your life. Start thinking of the solution to all of life's problems. You got a buddy who's like, girlfriend is losing interest. You're like, oh, maybe you should get her some uh, shutters and blinds. Heat up the relationship again. Uh, started thinking that maybe uh, you can solve the Middle East by getting the Israelis some shutters, Palestinians some blinds, cool off the Gaza Strip while it's literally in metaphorically. Uh, maybe they're going to the application. I don't know. You guys have been perfect. Thank you all. Have a beautiful night. There is no mic stand, so I'm just going to stand awkwardly for a minute. He gave me the light. You gotta tell your host when you're giving people the light. Yeah, here we go. Hey, it's Mr. C. He's doing Friday. What's up, buddy? Yeah! Good job. Another round of applause for Mr. Shaw Daddy. Big Shaw. Big Shiggity Shiggity Shaw. That's actually like a cool rap name. Like, yo, yo, it's Dave Shaw from 50th Street in New York. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you should start rapping, Dave. I'll get right on that. Alright, good man. Good man. Good man. That's right. All right, that's the end of Die Bar Comedy Podcast. This is host GT with Wild Joe, and that's about it, guys. Thanks a lot.